going to, I think we stopped at 8.26. Now we're going to pick up with stacking and combat at 8.43. Um, this one's not going to be a long one because I'm not going to go into detail on extended lines because um, I think I may need to do a whole separate video on extended lines on how they work. And then right after this section is movement, and I want to do that individually. So we're going to cover stacking and combat starting with 8.3. Okay. So when you're doing fire combat, it doesn't matter if you have, let's say you have these two units in a hex. All right. And they are going to fire at this guy sitting over here. You can fire seven strength points of infantry or dismounted cavalry if they are not stacked with artillery. So what that means is, is this top unit, he can fire five strength points, which leaves two more. So the bottom unit could fire two strength points to get your seven. Now there's the original rules to the game are no combined fire that each unit has to fire individually. But then there's also a bullet in the new rules where, uh, I guess it's an optional rule where you can combine that strength of those infantry units or the dismounted ca uh, cavalry, which is nothing but infantry with somebody holding their horses, um, firing. So you can fire seven strength points out of a hex if it's dismounted infantry or dismounted cavalry or infantry combined or whatever. Now, keep in mind that if you decide not to fire with the top unit, the, since he is a strength of five, the bottom unit, if you decide, okay, I'm not going to fire with the top unit, which I don't know why you wouldn't. There might be a circumstance. But I'm going to fire with the bottom unit. He can still only fire two because it's, it's like your frontage. you know. So he's still up there even though he's not shooting. So he can still only fire two. So keep that in mind. Seven strength points can be fired out of a hex if it's infantry and dismounted cavalry only. All right, let's get them out of the way. We don't need that leader. Mounted cavalry. So if this, and he's probably a bad example, some of the mounted cavalry units, you'll see their weapon type, which means they can fire mounted. They can only fire four strength points. So he could fire all four of his strength points out of that hex. If he were a two, and then there was another cavalry unit underneath him that was like a three. He could fire his two, and then the unit underneath him could fire two. Okay? So four strength points of mounted cavalry. All right? Get that out of the way. All right, artillery. Here we go. All right. Twelve strength points of artillery, if they are alone in a hex, can fire. So th we've talked about this before. Make sure. And you can see them not. This, this is two sections from the 12th Ohio. A section and B section because they're different types of guns. Together, they make up one battery, all right? So he's got five guns. Obviously, he can fire all five of them. All right, here's that in 26th Indiana battery. He's got an A section and a B section. Well, let's say they're in there, all right? So there's now there's five, there's 10 guns in here. They can all fire, all right? Um, also, there's bullets about that, about combining fire uh, at shot and shell range. That's four hexes or more, I believe, or it's more than four hexes. I Look it up on your fire chart. Um, I think it's four or greater. They can combine their fire. So if this guy were sitting back here and they were shooting at him, they could combine their fire. But if he's sitting up in here within that grape shot range or that canister range, they cannot combine their fire. The batteries can. So these two guns, they would shoot that battery. If he were by himself, or this, even if this battery in there, this battery could fire combined, and then that battery could fire combined. But they can't combine two different batteries. All right? So 12 guns can fire out of one hex side if all that's in there is artillery. All right, let's get that out of the way. Boy, I got, my fingers are not made for this stuff. But it's not going to keep me from doing it. Okay, artillery stacked with infantry or dismounted cavalry. Any combination of seven strength points or one battery 
which can exceed seven. So let's say we got this grunt in here, all right, and this battery's in here. All right, let's say the grunt's on top. Does anybody remember the rule about artillery firing, where they have to be in the stack? Artillery cannot fire unless they're on top. So truthfully, the only thing that could fire out of this hex is that five strength infantry, all right? Now, let's say that artillery were on top. The whole battery's there. He's got five guns, okay? So, an artillery stack with infantry or dismounted cavalry, any combination of seven strength points or one battery. So that one battery is five. So that means that that infantry unit can fire two, two strength points. Let's say that this battery were a total of 12 guns, just that one battery, then those 12 guns could fire, but that infantry can't fire underneath because it would be more than the seven strength points. But since it's one battery, they can fire their whole battery, all right? So remember, seven strength points or one battery, full. And remember, artillery's got to be on top. Did that confuse anybody? Do I need to go over that again? If so, raise your hand. Yeah, I'd make a hell of a school teacher. <clears throat> All right, artillery stack with mounted cavalry. It's a total of seven strength points, but only four can come from the cavalry. So if this five were sitting up on top of this cavalry unit of four, all right, if he fired hit five, he fires his five guns, that means that cavalry unit can fire two because it would equal seven, okay? Or if this battery were 12, again, he can fire all 12 his, of his guns, but nothing from the cavalry because that would exceed the seven strength points firing out of one hex. That's the key number. That Other than mounted cavalry, the key number is seven strength points out of one hex. If you balance yourself with that and then throw in the rules for mounted cavalry or just the battery firing, you'll be fine. Okay. Um, infantry and artillery stacked together may fire at separate targets. So these two guys are sitting here. This infantry is sitting in here and this battery is sitting in here, all right? That battery decides he's gonna shoot at him. Well, there's five, all right? So his five strength points shoot over at that one right there. That leaves two that the infantry fire. Well, the infantry can fire over here if he wants. Doesn't have to fire at the same target. He can, but they never combine, remember? So the artillery shoots at him that's five five guns, so he leaves him two strength points. He can fire at that target if he wants to, or he can fire at the same target. All right, remember that artillery must be the top unit to fire. All right, regardless of whether the top unit fires or not, the bottom unit can only fire up to the maximum of seven strength points out of the hex, so minus what the top unit strength points are. So that goes back to if this battery is on top, he's got five guns, which you, you use that as five strength points, okay? <clears throat> Even if that battery doesn't fire, remember, that guy underneath can only shoot two, all right? So if it's seven minus the top units. So, I mean, you might have freaking a, a unit with two, a unit with one, and a unit with three in a stack. All right, just remember, so all, all, all of those three units could fire because it only totals up to a six, all right, that is your stacking and fire combat, okay? It's, it's, believe me, it's not that hard. You start with that base of just, you'll be safe if you always remember seven strength points out of one hex. And then as you start to master fire combat, master the rules of this, the other little two or three niches will fall right into place and you won't even be thinking about it as you're playing. It'll just be natural. All right, so let's move on to, like I said, this one's gonna be short. Masked target, okay, so... If artillery is firing at point blank range within the three hexes, canister range, at that eight strength unit, well, then it's, he, his die rolls on a different table, okay? And uh, the battery can combine fire, but let's say these, both of these batteries in here, they would each have to fire, each battery would have to fire individually at that unit. Now, if these two, if, let's just take one of these batteries. Let's say this battery's sitting back here on this hill and he can hit this guy. If he's outside, if he's in uh, a shot or shell range, which is four hectares or more, and the strength points of the target are eight or greater, 
they're going to get a plus one die roll for a mass target. However, if their strength point is two or less, they're going to get a minus die, one die roll for a dispersed target. And I don't have a two strength unit on here. Here, we'll do this. We'll put a two strength point marker under him. He's been beat to hell. So he's only got two strength points left. He shoots at him at four hexes or greater. It's going to get a minus one die roll modifier because this is a dispersed target. There. Resolved. Any questions? Okay. Um, all right. Fire results to stacks. The top unit suffers the fire table results. If he is eliminated or he suffers a first or second disorder, all units in the hex must roll. They must do a UDD. So if these two Confederate units are in a hex, all right, and if he suffers, if he's eliminated or he suffers a first or second disorder. So Joe Bob Yankee over here, what are they called? Billy Yank? Yeah. Billy Yank fires at Johnny Reb. He disorders this guy. The top unit gets disordered. He takes the fire result. If he disorders, that guy's got to roll to see if he uh, suffers any problems. All right? So let's say that Billy Bob Yank or Billy Yank here shoots and he gets a one strength point loss on him, reducing him to a four. All right? And that's it. He doesn't disorder. The bottom unit doesn't have to worry about anything. All right? Let's say that Johnny Reb here is a, he is a one, okay? He's a one strength. And Billy Yank fires and eliminates this unit, but he gets a, he gets a losses. He fires and gets a kill of two, two, two losses. Well, he's only got one. So you take his one away, then you take the next one away from this guy here. All right? Like such. Because now he's become the top unit. He shredded the unit that was in front of him away, and now he's become the top unit. So just remember, if the top unit just takes a loss and there's no other ill effect, the bottom unit doesn't have to do anything. If the top unit suffers elimination, or he suffers a first or second disorder, uh, then the bottom unit has to roll for disorder. It's called, that's called the UDD. Universal Disorder Die Roll or something like that, okay? Exceptions to that. Excess losses get applied to the next unit in stack, uh, which we just talked about. So if you had three units in here, and the first unit were eliminated, all right, and there was another unit underneath him, if he was eliminated, then the next unit in the stack takes any remaining losses that were supposed to be applied to this unit. So once again, if, like I say, he took... He only had one strength point. He took two losses. The next unit in the stack would have to take that additional loss. And so forth down the line. And amazingly enough, that can happen. All units in a hex are individually affected by artillery fire at shot and shell range. All right. So, let's go back over here to this. Both of these units are sitting here. This artillery shoots at four or greater. He rolls his die, it will simulate. He rolls his die, and that die comes out to be a D plus one on the artillery fire shot and shell table. Each unit in that stack has to roll that D plus one. So you don't just roll it for one unit, and then it affects everybody. So you roll the D plus one, this guy might pass or fail, right? Each unit is affected individually, so then he rolls, because what's happening is, is the accuracy is, is you never know what unit's going to hit. So they make you roll forever. So if there's three units in here, each one of them's got to roll that D plus one um, uh, for see if they disrupt or not. All units in a hex... Oh, I just did that. Never mind. Pre-shock fire targets the top unit, and then you apply the rule of if the top unit is eliminated or suffers a first or second disorder, all units in the hex must also check. So... Really, to me, that's no different. You know, shock, shock pre-shock fire, it's just like regular fire combat. So, you know, you start with the top unit, and if he is eliminated, you apply any remaining results to the next unit in the stack, okay? All right. For multi-section batteries, you, ran, oh, you randomly choose 
which section takes the loss. So if you got to take a strength loss from one of these two batteries right here, um, you just randomly choose because they're act they're one battery, even though they're different sections. You randomly choose which one. So you know these things have to move together. Uh, they have to they have to stay together. So when you got to take a loss from one of them, you just choose which one you want to take the loss from. It says randomly. What am I supposed to like? Just do what is it? Eeny, meeny, miny, mo, and pick one. You can do that if you want. You can roll the dice, or you can just decide which one you want. The odds are you're going to take the most least effective gun. Like if I got uh, Napoleons in there and I've got uh, Howitzers in there, I might choose to just take one from the Howitzer instead of the Napoleon. You know, depending on who the better gun was. All right, eight, three, six, stacking and shock. All right. Units that are being attacked in a hex by shock combat and the units in a hex that are doing the shock combat, you combine their strength points. So if this rebel over here, this Johnny Reb is going to assault that unit right there um, with both of these, their strength would be combined. So it wouldn't just be a five and then a four, they would be nine. Okay. Same works for the defender. Defender is always going to you know, you might have units in this hex that you don't want to shock with, maybe just the one unit, but whatever's in the defender's hex, all of those are being shocked. All right, the top unit takes all the results. So if this attacking unit, or defending, which we'll say the attack, you say he's defending, he's attacking him. Let's say if he takes, he gets three, three strength point loss, which I don't even know if that exists in shock. It doesn't. He would take all the losses. The top unit would, not the bottom unit, okay? Except in a standoff. So if these Yankees were 13 strength points here, attacking this rebel unit of four, eh, better not do it that way. Let's do it this way. Let's say that these 13 Confederates were attacking this artillery and this infantry unit here, okay? If you get a standoff result, all right, the unit with the highest cohesion takes any loss, unless artillery is the top unit. And in that case, the artillery will take the loss. And I have to assume that's because the infantry that's charging them would want to destroy that artillery before anything else. If the situation were there were two infantry units in that hex, which that is a terrible example. Let's use one of these. Now, here we go. Let's say these two infantry units were here. All right. And it was a standoff and there was a loss to apply to the standoff, which I think both sides take a loss. In this case, it would be the unit with the highest cohesion, which would be this five strength unit because he has a cohesion of six. So he's gonna take the loss, even if he was at the bottom of the stack. And for the Confederates, well, they're both seven, so you just pick one. So, okay, so remember that, that's, that's probably the trickiest rule in here. Top unit always takes the results in the shot combat, unless it is a standoff where the highest cohesion unit will take the loss unless there's artillery. Unless artillery is in the stack and it's the top unit, then the artillery will take the loss. All right. Retreats apply to all units in a stack. So if there's a retreat result here, every unit in the stack has to retreat. All right. Disorder results on the shock table apply to every unit in the stack. So if you get a disorder result, they're all disordered. Okay. Um, Defending units conduct pre-shock fire individually. So let's go back over to the other situation. Um, five and an eight. So we got a five and an eight in here. All right. Same rules still apply. All right. Uh, as far uh, you can only fire seven. Remember, you can, that's a general rule: seven strength points. All right. But each one of these would fire individually. That's why I think the rule about uh, combining your fire, since it's only up to seven, um, you know, just because these guys wield up 200 men beside this five strength, these, 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 uh, excuse me, 100 men, 
beside these 250 men, there's no reason why their fire can't be coordinated. So I think that's why they uh, put the option rule there to be able to combine fire out of one hex like that, when it's especially when it's like infantry like that. But the jet, the rule, the non-option rule says that they must conduct their fire individually. So the five would fire, and then the remaining two from this guy would fire. Okay. All right. The top unit is used for pre-shock cohesion, but it affects all the units. So when you do your pre-shock cohesion unit or your pre-shock cohesion check, you use the cohesion rating of the top unit. So, so make sure when you go rolling in here to assault something that you've got your stack set right before you roll up in there. I don't, you don't, hey, I made a boo-boo of having a green two on top one time. Didn't even, just wasn't even paying attention. Um, speaking of green units, green units check their commitments separately. So if you have, and I don't have any here. Yeah, I don't have any here. Um, green units in the game, they'll have a G next to their cohesion number. If you have like two green units in a hex getting ready to do a shock attack, which I don't see that happening. Those don't work out very well. Both of those units have to check um, individually to see if they can do the attack. All right. Um, if attacking units disorder due to results, any unit in the stack that was ineligible to shock also disorders and they retreat if necessary. So like I was saying, if, if you like, uh, okay, so let's say there was an artillery battery, right? Uh, no, I can't, I don't have a unit in here that would be ineligible. I don't have one out. Um, to, honestly, I'm not even sure what, the, okay, okay, okay. So let's say, let's say that union, he is attacking there, okay? And the artillery's in the hex, all right? He moved in, he's on top. And he's going to shock him, but he suffers a retreat result or he suffers a disorder. Well, artillery cannot attack in shock combat. They can only, they defend with like a strength of one, I think. But they can't attack. So they're ineligible, but they would still suffer the result. And if these guys had to retreat, I don't remember if they can retreat or not, but they, in other words, they would, they would, they're going to suffer the same effect, disorder or retreat. Any unit that's ineligible that doesn't participate they're going to suffer it too. And that is pretty much it for stacking in combat. Like I said, this one was going to be quick um, because movement's getting ready to start. And I think that's going to take a little time too. So we'll get this one posted. Uh, any confusion or you got any comments about this? If I missed something, if I got something a little skewed, let me know so that I can, I can correct this stuff. All right, guys, thanks for watching this. Hey, don't forget, give it a like if you like it. Uh, subscribe and hit that bell so you'll know when the next one of these is coming out. I'm, I'm going to try to work a little harder with these uh, if things slow down at work because i got to have some playtime. All right, we'll get this posted. Talk to you all shortly.